This is Mindy Fiscus, Digital Access Coordinator for the Learning Technology Center of Illinois, here with a demo of the E-Rate Form 471 for funding year 19, Category 2 services. So we're going to get right into the demo here on the EPC landing page, and I'm going to start a Form 471 for Category 2 services. Clicking FCC Form 471 from this upper right-hand corner of the landing page will start our form. And the first thing that we are asked to do in filing a 471 is to name that document. So I'm going to go ahead here and call my form, um, Form 471, CAT 2, uh, FY1920. And the reason why I put a range on here is that funding year 19 for E-rate is fiscal year 20 for the state of Illinois. So it just clearly describes that entire school year for me. And I like to put that in the names of all my applications. Clicking in the lower right-hand corner, Save and Continue, will take us to the next page. The first few pages of the form here are identical to the pages that we have filed in our Category 1 examples. So it says, are you the main contact person? In this case, yes. Julie here is the main contact person for Hudsonville School District, so that's good. Um, she happens to be the superintendent and is there uh, all year long here. But if you are a school district employee who takes summers off, maybe not a 12-month employee, you can put an alternate contact information, whether that's a cell phone number for you that's personal or maybe the name and number of the superintendent at the district. So we're going to leave that blank for now and click Save and Continue. And this next page asks us what category of service this is. Today's example is a Category 2 application uh, for internal connections. Again, we're going to click Save and Continue in the bottom right-hand corner to take us to the district information pages. All of this was brought forth from the portal itself. This first page lists information about the school district. Please don't stress if you have blank boxes here within the chart. Um, some of this was self uh, put into the system, and Julie has put in her both her uh, state school IDs or the RCDT code for the state of Illinois. So can enter that information in the EPC and it's brought forward. This next page will list the two buildings in her district. Again, those state school IDs, but it also lists the number of students in each building. And clicking save and continue to the next page will give you a discount percentage for the district. So if you are uh, looking at these totals and these seem kind of off to you, there is a way to change those totals, uh, just not here in the system at this point. So uh, you need to file your 471 form first, and then there's a way to fix them on the back end, either during PIA review or before PIA review. If that is a challenge for you and these numbers look incorrect, uh, your discount level looks incorrect to you, do reach out to me at Mindy or mfiscus, M-F-I-S-C-U-S, at ltcillinois.org, and I'd be happy to walk you through that process. So everything looks great here for Hudsonville. We're going to click Save and Continue and take us next to the next page. There are two charts in this system. Uh, this is the first of the two charts. This is our funding request chart. This is where we're going to enter all of the individual funding requests. You need to have a new funding request for each provider. This is a pretty straightforward and simple example today. For Hudsonville, we have one provider that we're buying all of our internal connections from. Um, I have worked with several districts who have one provider that's maybe providing their wiring or another and another provider that's doing switches and access points or something like that. Um, so you can enter additional FRNs uh, for each provider that you're using. And then we put multiple lines of, of requests on that one FRN. So for our example, we're going to click Add FRN, and it wants to know what we're going to call this. So we're going to call this Network Upgrades. If you know it's in particular a cabling project, um, Wi-Fi access point, something like that, you can name it appropriately. It wants to know, is this a funding request from a previous year? The answer here is no. There's all services that are going to take place within this funding year. And uh, down here under service type, we have three options. So we have basic maintenance of internal connections. That is service on internal connections to keep them maintained. That is eligible. You do need to be able to specify which products you are getting service on. So it is only on eligible equipment. So uh, say service on routers, switches, firewalls, things like that. Um, internal connections, which is what I like to call the stuff. 
Uh, most of our requests are for that here in the state of Illinois. Also, a managed internal broadband service, which would be a company that you would pay to maintain your entire wireless network for you. That's usually a per student monthly charge, um, but that is also available in the in the program. So I'm going to go on internal connections for our example today. We are asking for network equipment. Clicking continue takes us to the next page and it wants to know, is this a contract tariff or month to month? In this case, this is a bid for equipment. Um, it is a bid that we have accepted. It's not a formal contract in the terms of Hudsonville School District, but it is a contract for the terms of E-rate. So we're going to go ahead and click on contract here. Uh, you do need to upload your contract information prior to filing the 471. If you're at this point and you haven't done that, it's not a problem. This is a safe sa saving feature here. You can just get right out of the form and go enter your contract information. And then when you click on the form and task, that will bring you right back to this point. Uh, there is a separate video here on our video series for how to enter that contract information. So do check that out if you are having some troubles entering your contract information. I'm going to go ahead and click continue here, which will take us to the next page that allows us to search through this EPC system for our available contracts. It already has the district bin number here, so I just need to click search over here in the corner and it will search all of the contracts in the system. It does only list a few here on the same page. You can see I have 17 in the system. I'm going to click on the award date column a couple of times. Um, then I can sort it to the most recent at the top. And the contract that we are going to use today is this one. Uh, it is a contract with a company called Charlie Incorporated. You can tell that it is a contract from the 2019 funding year because the uh, FCC Form 470 does start with a 1-9. So it's just verifying here that it is the, F the 470 from this year. And then when I come down here, it says, what is the service start date for this funding year? So that's correct there, 7-1 of 2019. It should self-populate for you. Um, and that is usually the standard number there or standard date there. And then it wants to know, what is the date your contract expires? I realize that for most people, you probably don't need till the end of the fiscal year in order to purchase your equipment, um, but that is the standard set date that we use. Any date that is different than 6-30-2020 may have to have a manual review at USAC. Um, it's, I've been told that the computer can kind of pass through any dates that have the uh, first day of the funding year and last day of the funding year. The added addition of this is it gives you the entire school year to go ahead and figure out when you want to best spend those funds. Some school districts like to go ahead and spend those funds early and get them before the school year starts. But if your review process runs into the fall, a lot of people will then put off their installation to either spring break or summer break at the end of the year. So you'll have ample time to get that equipment uh, paid for and then file for reimbursement. Clicking continue will now take us to the next page. And typically it asks us a few questions about the contract itself. Uh, these are the um, here after we write a narrative. So here I'm gonna do network upgrades for Hudsonville okay, School and Elementary School. It should be noted that each school in your district uh, does have a budget for Category 2. That budget is a pre-discount budget. So if you take roughly $155 times the number of students in that building, you'll get the budget for that building. That is a five-year budget. Uh, for those of you who spent money in the 2016 funding year, this is uh, the 15-16 funding year to 2020 now. Um, this will be the last year for that five-year window. Uh, we expect to see another window open for the next five-year window. Uh, hopefully that will take place sometime after the close of the application this year. You can be as detailed or as brief as you'd like here in the narrative, but I do believe something is required in order to move forward to the next page. Uh, please keep in mind that is a pre-discount budget. So if you do the math and you find out that you have $50,000 for that building, if you are a 60% uh, school district, that is $50,000. The 60% comes from uh, the USAC side, and then um, and then you would still have need to cover your 40%. So it's important to remember that budgets. Again, if you have any questions about Category 2 budgets, you can reach out to me, and I'd be happy to walk you through the figures for your district. 
So looking here, we have this funding request that is put in for network upgrades. We've attached the contract. We are halfway through with our, our deal here. Um, in our contract, we had a copy of the bid itself. Uh, so we have detailed out that information and we are ready to go ahead and add the details or the various products that we're purchasing. So in order to do that, I'm gonna click on the FRN number and it's gonna take us to the second of our two charts, which is our line items for this particular network upgrade. By clicking on new FRN line item, I can start to enter the equipment that I'm purchasing this year. So in our example here, uh, we're going to go ahead and purchase uh, some switches. We've got those right off the top. So switches are located under data distribution. Click on data distribution, and then the type of product is a switch. And again, um, if you're looking for a particular kind of project, product, you can uh, kind of take a look at the different choices here. Uh, notice there is wireless data distribution is separate than data distribution. Uh, sometimes if you're looking for like installation, uh, that's that's located in an interesting place here too. So we're going to start with this and we'll do installation here in a few minutes. So we've got data distribution switch. The make of the switch uh, is the name brand and we're going to go down here. For this case, it is a ubiquitous switch. So I'm going to click on ubiquity. And the model is a 2500. And it will say, is this included in is installation included in the price? In this case, no. I've got a couple of switches here, some wireless access points, and then installation is separate. Is this a lease or non-purchase agreement? No, it's not. Uh, this is something that we as the district are going to go outright after this contract. So clicking continue will then take us to the page to enter the um, cost of the unit. So this page is the same for both category one and category two. You'll see the monthly cost over here on the side. We don't really need this in a category two element. It's not something that's gonna cost us monthly. It is a one-time fee. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter some zeros over here on the left so it can calculate appropriately. Please note here in the units, there is a selected value that we need to choose. In this case, I'm gonna say each. We've got a couple of these switches that we're purchasing, uh, but do know I have dozen, foot, or 100 feet, or hours for the hours of service. So I'm gonna say each here, and my one-time cost on these units are $150. All of that is eligible, so everything on a switch is eligible for E-rate. So I'm gonna put zero there. Um, if I happen to know I'm choosing a firewall or something like that that also does my filtering, I would put the cost of the firewall here on the first line, subtract out the filtering component of that, um, and then it would calculate for me the eligible amount after. So you can see here it wants to know one time quantity. I'm getting two of these switches, uh, one for each of my labs. And when I come down here to the bottom, it will calculate the totals for me. And I have two switches at $300. So clicking save and continue will take us on to the next page. It's now going to ask us where we are putting these switches. Which building do they go in? Uh, which budget do they come out of? So in this case, I have uh, two switches, one for each building. So I can go ahead and say, yes, they're being shared by every entity. And yes, those entities are splitting the cost um, equally. If I had three switches, I would probably put two in the grade school, one in the high school, and I could designate that by saying no, and then breaking out the dollar amounts on the next page. We'll try to do that with our next example. So we've got a couple of different uh, switches here, one per each building, and when I say save and continue with my choices, it should provide for me the breakdown of that cost per building. So I see uh, one switch per building here. Looks good. Clicking continue will take us back into our line item chart. So notice in this chart, we have a 0 .001 for each product that we're purchasing. Again, in this example, we have one provider that we're purchasing everything from. You would have separate FRNs for each provider, but you can do a list of items you're purchasing under each one. So let's go ahead and add a new line item. And in this case, we are going to enter some wireless access points. So I'm going to come down here to wireless data distribution. And from there, I am going to choose wireless access points. Uh, while I'm here, I want to point out uh, if you are using a system that has a paid for wireless controller, that's also available here under this heading. I'm going to click access point here. And again, this is a ubiquitous access point. And it is model number 8100. 
So I've got Ubiquity 8100 access points. Um, the installation, again, is installation is not included, and it is a total purchase, not a lease. So with these 8100s, it gets a little tricky. Um, they're actually priced in groups of five, so I have to do a little math. Um, it is $500, a uh, special deal here, $500 for five access points. Uh, I am actually getting 15 access points. So here on the left-hand side, I'm gonna enter my zeros again. Um, these are not one time, but monthly fees. Um, but I don't have groups of five here as my choice. So I'm gonna go have to go ahead and have to say each. Doing the math here, um, that ends up to being $100 an access point. Um, I'm going to put here that all of that is eligible. So that is zero. And in my one-time quantity, I'm going to put 15. Again, I'm buying these in bundles of five, uh, but the math does still work out either way. So if you have uh, bundled products, please keep that in mind. Um, I did see a district a while back put each and then do um, the $500 fee here and then three here. Uh, USAC prefers that you go ahead and do the math, math and spread it out by each individual product if you can. Um, they'll work with you in PIA review to straighten that out to meet their needs. So I've got uh, $1,500 here total. I'm going to click Save and Continue. Happens to be easy math here with my $500 example. Uh, it, don't go out quoting that. It may just be an example that we're using today. <laughs> So uh, here it wants to know, is this for every entity in the organization? Again, this is yes, but on this one, I'm going to say no down here at the bottom. I um, want to be able to break out the money for each building and show that to you guys. So I'm going to click Save and Continue. And on the next page, it's going to ask me how many devices and how I'm going to break that down by building. So notice here it has the $1,500 up here. In this case, I'm going to put 10 of these wireless access points in the grade school and five in the high school. I'm going to click on both of these to be able to edit the cost. Clicking edit eligible cost takes me to the next page and it says please allocate all of the funds here. So I'm going to put $1,000 here and then $500 here at the high school level. So it gives me a little freedom there. Uh, people who are running towards the end of their budgets, if I only had an available $300 left at the high school, I could put $1,200 here at the grade school and $300 at the high school. USEC really does prefer that you do it by unit costs and that those units do remain in the district uh, building that they are appropriated to. So clicking Save and Continue will just confirm those totals for me. And then again, Continue will lead me back to my line item chart. So again, I have uh, the switch that I've asked for in the data distribution. One last example for a line item, we're gonna go ahead and put in the installation. It was a separate charge. And I'm gonna come down here to miscellaneous. That is where we're gonna find our installation, activation, and initial configuration. So if you're looking for that as a separate line, go ahead and find that there. Um, it is, of course, not included in the price, it is installation itself. And then it wants to know what are you installing? So in this case, uh, the bulk of the work here is in the access points. So I'm gonna click down here um, on the ubiquitous access points. Those were 8100s again, and uh, it is not a lease agreement. So it's asking me what am I putting in? Uh, for most of the bids I've seen that activation is a bulk for all of the products that you're installing. Just kind of take a best guess at that. If the majority of the products that they're installing uh, revolve around wireless access points or cabling or something like that, uh, use your best judgment. It's better if that's broken down per item, but I don't usually see that. So again, zeros on our left-hand side for category two. I'm going to choose um, hours here. And I have a one-time cost of uh, $75 an hour. All of it is eligible, and the quantity is guessing here at five hours. So I've got that. Um, I have also seen it listed as each and a, a total set amount of 375 here in the one-time cost. So I've seen it, it taken by USAC each way. So in this case, it was broken down um, by hour of service. Clicking Save and Continue will take us right back to our chart, or I'm sorry, onto um, the designated schools. Again, the service here can be split equally. I could have broken that down again, uh, one third and two thirds if necessary. 
clicking this again, just confirming it's now taking another $187.50 uh, out of each building. And that takes us back to our overall chart. Just I'm moving a little slowly here in the last few days of the window. And we're back here at our line item chart. Notice we have three line items again, the switch, the access points, the installation and activation. Um, we can put as many items as we need to that are all in the same bid or contract here. I'm gonna go ahead and say continue to take us back to our overall FRN chart and show you one little quick more thing. Um, on our overall chart, I now have one FRN for the provider and three line items. Again, if I had several providers that I was working with, I would want to have an FRN for each one. I've also seen school districts working with the same provider, but doing one FRN for the grade school, another FRN for the high school, totally acceptable as well. You can organize your contracts just the way that you would like. Also, in that circumstance, you can attach the same contract to multiple FRNs. So whatever makes sense in your mind, you can, you can organize it that way here within the system. Please note over here to the right, it does give me the FRN calculation. This total is the total that USAC is paying for. So if you go ahead and give a quick click on that, it will show you the entire um, pre-discount one-time charge, um, the total discount charges, and it does take that 80% and show you that, which means that uh, the school district will be covering uh, the remainder. So again, it does show you that there in the calculations if you wanna double check those with your bids and invoices. So. Uh, from here, you would click Review Form 471. That generates a PDF of the uh, document for you to review. You can click the box and move on to certification. Uh, please read those certifications, everything from promising that you work for the school district and will use it for educational purposes to the fact that you will have waited your 28 days to choose your bids and will retain your paperwork for 10 years. There's also that fun one in there that says, I am not a criminal. So make sure you are able to check that one. Um, in those certifications, there are a couple drop downs in the, in the middle uh, that you need to read closely. Um, they, in essence, say that the service provider is filling out the form for you. That's not the case. You're filling it out yourself. So please choose no to those those two options in the middle, um, but do take a look at those certifications moving forward. Best of luck with your E-rate applications. And again, if you need extra support from the Learning Technology Center, you can reach me at mfiscus at ltcillinois.org.